Hi, everybody. I'm Christy Sink. I'm a member of CCA's Human Resources Department, and I'm continuing to read out of the Animal Rescue Center series, and this one is called The Abandoned Hamster. And where we left off was on Chapter 5, so we're heading into Chapter 6, and Chapter 6 is called First Impressions. Ella's suspicions about Katie Platt had turned into concrete certainty. It's obvious when you think about it, she explained to Annie on Tuesday morning. She must have already decided to get rid of Hamlet when she came to Grandpa's garden center with her dad. She was most likely keeping him hidden in her pocket, waiting for her chance. And when her dad was getting mad at Grandpa about the fence, she happened to be standing next to the garbage can, so she just flipped the lid and dropped poor Hamlet in. But why, Annie asked. She and Ella had been waiting in the lunch line when Ella spotted Katie Platt standing alone at the cafeteria door. Quiet, Ella warned. Why would Katie want to get rid of her hamster, Annie whispered. Maybe she was tired of taking care of him, Ella suggested. At Animal Magic, we're used to people getting bored and dumping their pets. It happens all the time. They're all into it at first, then they just can't be bothered. Annie frowned, but her mom said Katie loved animals. I'm not so sure. Ella noticed Katie wander across the cafeteria to join the line, so she shushed Annie again. Stand in line, Mrs. Owen told everyone, making a space for Katie behind Anna and Ella. You're new, aren't you, dear? Whose class are you in? Mr. Hawks, Katie mumbled. Just then, Mrs. Owen spotted Ella Oh, hello, Ella. I'm glad to see you, she said in her loud, cheery voice. I mentioned Hamlet the hamster to my son, Matthew. Ella drew a deep breath and frowned. For once, she didn't want to talk about Hamlet, not with Katie listening. Mrs. Owen chatted on. It turns out that Matthew would love to have a hamster for his own little boy, Kyle. He's thinking of bringing Kyle out to Animal Magic this weekend to take a look at little Hamlet. Ella nodded. Talk about something else. By now, Katie was taking in every word, biting her lip and looking more unhappy. What color is Hamlet, Mrs. Owen asked, reaching behind Ella's back to get a place for Katie. Nightmare, change the subject. Can't you see? I don't want Katie to know. But Mrs. Owen wasn't picking up on any of the signals. On she went. And how did the poor thing end up at the rescue center in the first place? Before Ella could clear her throat to give an answer, Annie nudged her with her elbow. <clears throat> Ella turned just in time to see tears welling up in Katie Platt's gray eyes. Mrs. Owen noticed, too. Oh, dear, she muttered as Katie turned and dashed out of the cafeteria. Was it something that I said? Kyle Owen. Caleb made a note of the name. You say he's coming in to see Hamlet this weekend? I hope, Ella told him. It was already Thursday evening, and Mrs. Owen had spoken to Ella again about her grandson and how much he wanted to have a pet. So keep your fingers crossed. Who are we keeping our fingers crossed about now? Mom had just come into the reception area with a stranger, a tall, thin-faced woman with fashionable jet black hair, dressed in jeans and a red sweater. Hamlet, Ella answered. We might have found the perfect owner. Matching the perfect pet with the perfect owner. The woman obviously knew the animal magic motto. She smiled as she said it, and her serious face was transformed. Her gray eyes shone, and her lips parted to show perfect white teeth. Ella, Caleb, this is Jen Andrews. She applied for Joel's job, so she's here to take a look around. Ella's hello was guarded, but Caleb shook Jen's hand. Do you want me to show you the cat area, he offered. Yes, that sounds good, Jen said, eagerly following Caleb out of the reception area. Maybe you could show her around the small animals unit afterward, Mom suggested to Ella. I've already shown her the kennels. She seems nice. Okay, Ella agreed, but it seemed odd to be showing Jen around when Joel was still here, as if she was helping to shove him out. How many small animals do you have right now, Jen asked Caleb after, after Caleb had done his part of the tour. She was following Ella down the row of rabbits and guinea pigs toward the cage at the end. Twenty, Ella told her. I like them all, but Hamlet is my favorite. Jen stooped to look into Hamlet's cage. Yes, he's a handsome little fellow, she agreed. Can I hold him? Ella nodded. She opened the cage and scooped up Hamlet. 
He's quite perky, isn't he? Jen smiled as she handled him. Does he have a regular grooming routine? Ella nodded. His nails are a little too long, though. I'm going to ask Mom or Joel to clip them. Good idea. Inspecting Hamlet carefully, Jen's smile faded a little. Hmm. Hamlet's eyes are a little watery. Have you noticed? No. Is that bad? Suddenly, Ella was anxious. Could be. Has Hamlet had much soft food since he came in? Ella thought for a moment. I give him apples as a treat. Does that count? Jen nodded and pressed gently against the hamster's cheeks. Sometimes soft food gets stuck way back in the cheek pouches. It presses against the tear ducts and make their eyes water. I didn't know that, Ella gasped. Poor Hamlet, he's sick and it's all my fault. Don't worry, it's not serious, said Jen, but it makes him uncomfortable. What we need is a tiny eyedropper filled with warm water that we can drop into Hamlet's mouth to flush out the pouches. Ella nodded and went quickly to the storeroom to get the dropper. Soon Jen was holding open Hamlet's mouth while Ella gently dropped in the liquid. There, with her little finger, Jen eased the food out of the hamster's cheek pouches. That's better, isn't it? Ella nodded and sighed. What a relief. How come you know so much about hamsters, she asked. Smiling, Jen put Hamlet back in his cage. I made a special study of small rodents when I was in college, especially illnesses having to do with their mouths and teeth. Cool. Ella watched as Hamlet climbed inside his wheel and began trotting around and around. Really, Jen, thanks. Hamlet's totally happy now, thanks to you. Chapter 7, Second Chances. Jen Andrews gets Ella's vote, Mom told Joel. Dole. It was Saturday morning and she and Joel were on the porch outside the reception area talking about the applicants for Joel's job. She can hardly wait to shove you out the door. That's not true, Ella yelled as she set off across the yard on her bike. I still want Joel to stay, but if we have to have someone new, I want it to be Jen. No one could ever accuse Ella of holding back her opinion, Mom laughed, watching her daughter follow Caleb up Main Street. It was time for another session with Bonnie and Clyde, and Ella was looking forward to it. As long as we don't see Katie, she thought. All week at school, she'd been avoiding her, and at their nightly training sessions, Ella had been glad when Katie wasn't around. Don't you think you're being a bit hard on that poor girl? Ella's grandpa had asked after the Friday evening lesson. He'd been watching from his side of the fence and had seen Ella deliberately turn away from Katie when Mrs. Platt brought her out to watch. No way, Ella had said. Grandpa, it was Katie who dumped Hamlet in your garbage can, remember? How can I be friends with someone as cool as that? Overnight, Grandpa had been thinking about what Ella had said, and this morning he stopped her as she and Caleb arrived at the Platt's house. Hello, Ella Bella, he greeted her. How's my favorite? I'm in a hurry, Grandpa, she called. Bonnie and Clyde are waiting for us. Sure enough, the Dalmatians had heard her voice and set up a duet of excited barks and yelps from the Platt's screened-in porch. I just need a quick word with you, Grandpa said. Oops, Ella guessed she was in trouble. What did I do wrong? Nothing, he assured her, taking off his thick gardening gloves and rolling back his sleeves. It's not what you have done, more what you haven't done. What do you mean, Ella asked. You haven't made friends with Katie, Grandpa explained, and I think maybe you've been a bit hasty. Oh, Ella frowned. She thought she'd explained all that. Her grandfather pressed on. Katie seems pretty unhappy, he pointed out. Sulky, yes, bad temper, definitely, but unhappy? Think about it, her grandfather went on. She's just moved to a new house and a new school with hundreds of new people and her mom and dad are too busy with the house to help her settle in properly. How would you feel if you were her? Grandpa, Ella protested. You missed one big thing. Katie Platt has been cool to Hamlet. She dumped him and he could have died. There was a long pause while Grandpa rubbed his chin. Maybe so, he said quietly. But you don't know for sure that it was Katie, and even so, Ella, I think you should give her a second chance. Sit, stay, come here. Ella and Caleb ran through the commands. As usual, Bonnie and Clyde were A students. Nice work, Grandpa called from his rows of sweet peas and roses. You'd never know they were the same dogs, Mr. Platt, who'd come out of the house, praised what he saw. What did I tell you, Mrs. Platt joined him as Caleb and Ella went on with the lesson. Come and look, Katie, see how well the dogs are doing. Katie trailed out of the house to stare blankly over the fence into the field beyond. Now we'll do fetch. Ella decided, setting a stick in the grass. 
She told Bonnie to sit and stay. Bonnie fidgeted as she gazed at the tempting stick beside her. She pricked her ears, then looked up at Ella, who had walked 20 steps across the field. Okay, now fetch, Ella called. Quick as a flash, Bonnie grabbed the stick and raced toward Ella. Great, click and treat, good girl. That afternoon, Ella and Annie came up with a plan to saddle Buttercup and ride her down to the river. We want to see if Buttercup likes to paddle, Ella told Mom, who was busy at the computer. Some horses like water, don't they? Yes, and some don't, Mom warned. When I was young, I had a pony who wouldn't even go near a puddle. She glanced up as the door to the reception area opened, and Mrs. Platt walked in with two lively customers. Hello, what can we do for Bonnie and Clyde, she asked with a pleasant smile. We'd like you to microchip them, Mrs. Platt explained, holding the door open for Katie, who trailed after her. We knew when we adopted them that they would need chipping. The Dalmatians padded around the tiled floor, poking into every corner. No problem, Mom assured Mrs. Platt. Have a seat while I get things ready in the treatment room. Okay, Mom, I'm off to find Annie, Ella said hastily. She didn't even glance at Katie as she left. But she was only halfway across the yard when she remembered Buttercup Street and made a dash for the storeroom outside the small animals unit. Ella fished around in a cardboard box and picked out the juiciest apple. She was just heading back when she heard a movement from inside the unit. Better make sure that everything is okay, she thought, and pushed open the door. Katie Platt had sneaked in and was tiptoeing down the row of cages and gazing in. When she came to Hamlet's cage, she cracked, crouched down low. Ella watched in amazement. How can she face him after she did, after what she did to him? Katie did nothing except stare at cuddly, easygoing Hamlet. The hamster poked his pink nose through the bars of his cage and twitched his whiskers. Ah, Katie said softly. Then Mom and Mrs. Platt came to find her. Ella, I thought you'd gone riding, Mom said, squeezing past. I am. I forgot Buttercup's apple, Ella stammered. Ah, Katie, there you are. Mrs. Platt spied her daughter by Hamlet's cage. Her smile faded. Time to go, she said sadly. Katie's lip trembled, and she put her hand up to the bars of Hamlet's cage. Bye, she whispered, following her mom back into the reception area. Chapter 8, Love at First Sight That evening, Ella was serious and silent. What's up? You haven't said a word for at least five minutes. Are you sick? Caleb asked after dinner. Yes, sick of you asking silly questions, Ella grumbled. Annie had said the same thing out on the ride. Was Ella okay? Had something bad happened to Animal Magic? No, everything's cool, Ella had told her. But she couldn't figure it out. Why had Katie Platt snuck in to see Hamlet? And why had she looked as if she was about to cry? I get it, she thought suddenly as she put on her pajamas and brushed her teeth. Katie abandoned Hamlet, and now she's feeling guilty. She had to make sure it was him and that he was okay, but now she's feeling really bad. Mystery solved. Ella went to bed feeling better. At least Katie Platt wasn't a total monster after all. Ella got up the next morning full of energy with high hopes that the sunny Sunday would bring in a lot of people wanting to adopt pets. I've got a feeling it's going to be a good day, she told Caleb, who was updating the website. I bet we find homes for at least five of our animals. That would be an amazing day, Caleb muttered. In fact, you'd probably need to wave a magic wand to get five in one day. Ha ha, you're funny. Typical Caleb. First off, Mickey, I've decided I'm going to ask Annie's mom to take him. Caleb grunted. I wouldn't hold my breath. Face it, Ella. Mrs. Brooks is more likely to adopt Rosie than Mickey. She likes Mickey, Ella protested. Yesterday, I saw her in the field petting him and giving him a carrot. Who else? Caleb challenged. Hugo, Ella decided. I bet one of those people who called about him comes in. And Hamlet, she declared. Mrs. Owen's grandson will want him the minute he sees him. There was no more time to convince Kayla before the first people arrived. We'd like a dog, a middle-aged couple explained to Joel. We've just lost our beloved Sandy. Now we're looking for a dog that's already house trained. How about Buster, Ella broke in. And Penny's very friendly. Would you like to look at them? The couple nodded and followed Joel and Ella into the noisy kennels. Within minutes, they'd fallen in love with Buster and decided he was the dog for them. Success, Ella reported to Caleb when she went back into the reception area. She spotted a man and a small curly-haired boy reading flyers in the rack. Is your name Kyle Owen? She asked the boy eagerly. Have you come about a hamster? Follow me. The boy and his dad went with Ella into the small animals unit. 
Your grandma sent you, didn't she? I told her all about Hamlet. He's right at the end of the row. Ella led the way, talking all the while. Wow, little Kyle was amazed by each animal he came to. He liked the rabbits and the guinea pigs. They're cool, what are they? He asked, pointing to Honey and Happy. I like this one, he cried, stopping by Frankie the ferret's cage. Hamlet's down here, Ella insisted. But Kyle was staring in wonderment at Frankie, who was sitting by the bars, raised up on his haunches, his front paws dangling. What's his name? That's Frankie. He's a ferret, Ella said. Look how fast he moves, he said to his dad as the ferret darted to the back of his cage and burrowed in his straw bed. Look, his face is peeking out. Do you like him? Matthew Owen asked with a smile. Ella frowned. This wasn't supposed to be happening. But then again, it would be great if Frankie found a new home. Um, would you like to see Hamlet before you decide? She asked quietly. I like this one, Dad. Kyle's eyes were shining. Can I have him? And that was it. Love it for a sight. Ferret or hamster, it didn't matter to Kyle. Matthew Owen filled out the forms and he and Kyle took Frankie home. I'm sorry, Hamlet, Ella said to her favorite hamster when she returned. You're still homeless, but don't worry. I'm sure it won't be for long. Hamlet ambled up and sniffed at her hand. Then he went back to his squeaky wheel. I'm not worried, he seemed to say. I'm perfectly happy here. Thank you very much.